Here we go. What time is it? 5.14, good. Everybody in? Okay, good. Welcome back. Good to see everybody's faces. Who, who drove over here? Put, let me see your hands. Who took the bus? Did you have fire in your gut? Did you? We're here for a reason. Don't get that twisted, okay? We're here for a reason to win games. So if you didn't have that fire in your gut, you better, you better light the fire pretty fast, okay? So everyone's on time. Everyone's got fire in their gut. How you go about your day is going to be critical for our success as a team. Winning behavior is winning behavior. On a daily basis, to become the best player that you can be, so we can be the best team that we want to be. Don't show up a minute late, I'm finding you. Because you're not putting yourself behind the team. You're putting yourself in front of the team if you do that, and it's bull because your buddies are counting on you. You understand? Jeff's counting on you. Nick's counting on you. I'm counting on you. Hump is counting on you to do the right So do the right or we're gonna get waxed. You understand? Truthfully, if you said, hey, JG, what do you want your team to look like? I want them to be killers. Truthfully, silent killers. Killers, okay? So be who you are. Just understand, I'm looking for killers. How's everybody doing? We appreciate you guys, everybody being here. The players are excited. Since I started coaching, uh, I've never worked a day in my life. Like, it is fun for me to come to the office. I'm just gonna be who I am, but I'm excited about walking through the door every day. So, uh, I let that show. boy, four, high and tight. Ball security, ball security, boy. Go, good run. Any free time that I have, if I got 10 or 20 or 30 minutes, I'll just put on some tape and watch. You know, as you watch, you let things kind of hit your brain and you think about certain things. I always take notes, you know, when I'm, when I'm watching tape. It's a happy place for me because the best thing about this job is the players. So anytime I can watch the players and, and watch them, and the more and more you watch, I think you have a better understanding of what they're out there doing and, and how they're playing as, as players and hopefully we can help them a little bit. Bad players, okay, watch the tape on Monday. Good players, watch the tape before Monday. Great players, watch the tape before Monday. Talk to your teammates, text your coaches, and have questions when you come in here on Monday. That's what's expected off of a day off or after a game we have to learn from what happened. We're gonna be adaptable um, because I think that's where the game is in 2023. And a game. Hey, you need a touchdown, 258 left. Okay. Defense, come here, come here. We want our guys to be versed with things that are coming up, things that are happening, things that opponents are trying to exploit and things that we're trying to exploit. So, but you have to talk about it and teach them and educate them so they're on top of it when it comes up in between the white lines. You got 258, they need a touchdown to win. Just understand the situation, they need a touchdown to win. The pressure is on them, you know what I'm saying? Jesuit education is, comes down to servant leadership and I, I think it applies to being a coach. That's ultimately what your job description is, in my opinion, is to serve the players. So learn that, obviously, when I went to St. Ignatius, um, my high school coach, he wrote a book called Object of the Game, and all the chapters basically deal with, in one form or fashion, team first. See that number two on it right there, in the back of it? There it is. Someone like Jeff Rogers, who's been around and seen a lot. How much did you rely on him? Yeah, I lean on him a lot. You know, he's been around a lot of staffs, a lot of a lot of good head coaches. I always ask him, "Where are my blind spots, Jeff?" You know, he's very candid with me. He's honest and he communicates very effectively. He's helped me a lot.
I was in Denver from 11 to 14, and there's a couple guys in our staff that rode. My brother was on that staff. That's kind of where it started and continued on in Chicago and here for the last few years. You know, there's, there's very few things that kind of relax or kind of allow you to zone out, and for me, this was one of them. You know, I figure when, when you try to do something every day, exercise, cardio, whatever, and if I ride in, it's an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, somewhere in there, depending on lights and stuff. So it kind of works out timing wise the same, same way. 2018 was my first year. Honestly, I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. You got to ask some of those guys that have made decisions. You just want to do as good as you can. And uh, every year presents its new challenges. The punt for the back of his end zone. And it got blocked by Gardak. Jeff Rogers, the special teams coach, has become a very valuable voice. He knows the game very well. Every game, there's always things that pop up. 52-yard field goal and the block for the Cardinals. I use the term ball is ball. You know, there's, there's a lot of crossover between the things I'm asking them to do and the things the defensive coaches or offensive guys are are doing. There's things that happen on both sides of the ball that you have to be aware of. And I think special teams coaches other than the head coach are probably the guys who have to be proficient at knowing the situations, knowing how the game management stuff plays out, timeouts, all those things. I mean, the return game is an offensive play. You got the ball in your hands and you're trying to score or create yards and the defense and the coverage groups, they're both trying to tackle the guy with the ball. So there's a lot of crossover with that. Me personally, I just try to find examples that show that, which kind of leads guys to realize they're doing these same things. There's just way more space involved when it comes to the kicking game. We can go left on Shutterfly and then go all the way up to the canal, which is probably another couple minutes. And then, uh, yeah. This would be true of every guy on our staff that wasn't retained. I'd never met anybody before. I'd never met Drew, I'd never met Nick, I'd never met the head coach. So you're kind of starting from ground zero. And my interactions with them have been, been good. Both, both have good energy, both are organized, good communicators. That's kind of where it starts. I think on all three sides of the ball, complimentary football is really important. I've always believed this and the head coaches echoed this. Really good teams, the locker room takes over. So you kind of provide some guardrails on how we're going to do things and coach doesn't have a ton of rules. It's just put the team before yourself and kind of empowering those guys to lead the way that um, they feel like they need to. And the culture part of it is yet to be determined because you got to start playing games and sustained success over time. I think that's more reflective than kind of some of the things that we're still developing right now. The Cardinals will be in Minnesota. Two joint practices plus a preseason game Saturday. These two practices maybe the two most important practices of all a training camp. Uh, I was in Minnesota for six years. I was with the Vikings for three years. I got there as kind of a coaching assistant my first year. I was in the running back room. A quality control coach under Mike Zimmer. Phenomenal three years, learned a lot. And I got moved into the receiver room. I was the assistant receiver coach for three years. I spent one year as the assistant quarterback coach, and then my final year in Minnesota, I was the receiver coach in 2019. So I didn't want to miss it. No, hell no. I See you guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, appreciate it, man. I'll catch up with you. Yeah, for sure. I know Great. You work. I'll say I'm probably right near you when we're doing the college. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to be back here. Are we going to get the hood up today or are you going to be down? It's
hot, dude. <laughs> How do you know about the hood? Because I watch, yeah, I watch uh, game cut ups. <laughs> You're a celebrity. Oh, f you. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> what do you think? How's it look? Nah, I don't like this. Hoodie. And he will call the defense throughout the year. And he is quite the first test on his hands going up against. Yeah, I was just, I was just kind of feeling it in the moment. Uh, I felt like it kind of put me in a, in a little bit of a tunnel vision. I like that. But then, you know, I just did it in the, in the moment. And then the next, the next game, you know, I wasn't thinking about it. And, and the players were coming up to me saying, put the hood on, put the hood on. I was like. Well, I don't have any choice now. Like the players are asking for it, I better put it up. If it's going to help them play better, sure, I'll put the hood on. Hey, their intensity is low, and we're matching it right now. We got to pick our intensity up. Okay, I know it's hot. We'll we got to work. Okay, their intensity is low, and we're matching it. Saying the right things, we just got to be about it. At some point, you just got to do it. At some point, you just got to do it. Yeah, I think this is kind of the part of camp where you start to have an idea of who you are as a team. Certainly, as an offense, we've got to know the players over the last couple months, and. It's an opportunity to go out and compete against guys that maybe they don't know as well, a scheme they haven't seen every day, and kind of see how people react to some adversity and go compete against uh, another NFL team. So uh, it's, it's a really fun time in training camp. Love it, love it, love it. Good route. As soon as that hip stops throttling, accelerate again. He's your first read. Good eyes, good decision, good. Game ground. Good, David. Good break, good break. Good angle, 1-4, good angle. Love that stride length too. Good route. JG's been a huge resource for me, kind of my first time in this role. You know, something he went through a couple years ago in Philly and, you know, just getting out in front of some of the issues that come up in terms of player management, making sure you're prepared for the day-to-day -day of the job, uh, making sure that you're doing a good job communicating with your staff so that people know what's expected, uh, and then putting the best product you can on the field. I think he's been really good. I've leaned on him a lot through these last couple months. Three, five, seven, hitch, hitch. Good, get it down. Go, good. Dude. Drew's an assassin on a headset. No doubt. It's He's not losing his mind at all. You know, somebody, Flip over to defense, I listen to him. He's shit. unreal. No, I know. I've been listening. I learned a ton from him with our, in our two years in Philadelphia of feel throughout a game, understanding a play caller uh, that you're going against and his tendencies and when certain things are going to happen throughout the game. Really just opened my eyes to have certain calls in certain moments of that game that best take away what they're trying to accomplish. Ball, scoop it! Well, me and Nick worked here together for two years, uh, got to know him really well, uh, have a ton of respect for him as a person, as a coach. Uh, he's really intelligent, brings a lot to the table, uh, and is also a lot of fun to be around. You know, sarcastic, you know, funny. Uh, it definitely makes it fun to come to work competing with him every day in the off season and in training camp. That's crazy. <laughs> That constant conversation with Drew, it, it leads to a lot of knowledge growth for me. And I, I appreciate our relationship greatly because ever since I first came in the league and didn't know, didn't know a lot, and he was, he was one of the first people to really help me out and give me a lot of advice and give me information on certain defenses or offenses that I needed to, to study and look at. He had such a big influence on me as, at a young age. That's a huge two-way street. I mean, any time that I can gain the perspective, of, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you playing that front? Well, you know, why do you feel like that's hard for us? Uh, it gives me a little insight into how people may attack us on defense and how we need to be ready to or prepared to handle those type of things. So he's someone I know I can lean on. That he's gonna be, he's gonna give me an insightful answer and help me understand that situation. Here we go. Here we go. Communicate in and out of the huddle. Let's go. There it is. Good job. Stay with it. Go get it, Keytrail. Good. Had a baby key trail. Ah. Ah. There we go. You know, I love being around my daughter and getting her out on the field and playing with the football and uh, watching her enjoy that is a ton of fun. It's a big race. I'm right behind you. I'm catching up to you. I'm right behind you. You're one of the youngest coordinators in the league. I'm a lot older than Nick. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't know if my age has set any expectations in year one. Honestly, it's just every day I think about what do I need to do to best serve my staff, to help best serve the players, play with a high motor, play with violence, limit explosives, take the ball away, affect the quarterback, and be situational masters. 
I think the big thing is it's about effort and, and kind of the sense of community and the sense of, um, I don't even know the best way to put it, but the sense of being together and working for each other. I think if we can do that, regardless of kind of the performance, we'll feel pretty good about where we are. And usually if you do those two things, the performance takes care of itself. So I think really energy and effort and kind of that sense of team is going to be really important for us. 6 eight, we good? Hey, you've been through a lot of this. Be there for these guys. They, they haven't been through this. Some of these young guys are going to be looking around like they never seen it. We got our ass kicked today. Yep. But some days you get the bird, some days the bird gets you. Just make sure those young guys see it and they hear it from you. All right. You've seen a lot of good and bad. You know what it looks like when it's going right and what it looks like when it isn't. So my big thing will be we can't we can talk about it, but that's not what matters. We just gotta be about it. So and I think we can own that. Ultimately we wanna give them the blueprint of how we wanna operate on a daily basis. And then the great teams I've been around, the players take it over. The coaches, they kind of make sure that the, the, it's functioning the proper way, but the players ultimately take it over. As a whole, I mean, everyone's, you know, caring about each other. You know, everyone is working hard, very hard, offense, defense, special teams. Just the accountability has been very great for us and great for the young guys coming in because they're understanding what a, what a good culture looks like for an NFL team. You have to set yourself aside, your individual goals and what you want to do as a player for the betterment of the team. And typically when you do that, you end up accomplishing your goals and becoming the best player you can be. You either win or you lose when you put on that helmet, but uh, you know, I think that's the consistent winners put themselves behind the team. Team first. <laughs>